TigerCast Beyond the Game is brought to you by Embassy Suites Hunt Valley, a preferred hotel partner of Towson Athletics. Book your stay in this all-suites hotel by calling 410-584-1400 or by visiting them on the web at embassybaltimore.com. Hey, Tiger fans, we're back with another episode of TigerCast, the official podcast of Towson Athletics. I'm Laura Leidick with the Towson Sports Network, and I'm joined by the voice of Towson Field Hockey, Brandon Sachs, and Field Hockey Attack, Samantha Aljets. To kick things off with um, this past Sunday, you played LaSalle and you had two goals, which is your career high. Um, What other goals are you setting for yourself this season? Uh, As a team, we've really been focused in the past few years to make it to the CAA tournament, and I've made that also my personal goal is to contribute as much as possible to the team to make sure that we get to that tournament at the end of April. Just looking back at the game on Sunday, I mean, Laura just said it, you had two goals. What were you seeing out there? What was working for you? Um, our, Our press was really good, which is when we're on defense. It was looking really good, and so we just had such an, an high intensity on that forward line when we were on defense, and then when we did have that final opportunity to then have the ball in our possession, it was kind of just go, 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 this is our time, and we made sure that we carried that energy over into attack as well, and so the one goal, it was Beta, who was our low center mid, she drove it in and we got some touches on it and we finished. And then for the second one, we had all momentum going forward into the play. And it was just really fun moments on the field of that high energy on that forward line. What were the diff- what were you seeing in this game versus the game against Delaware, where unfortunately you didn't come with the win, but with LaSalle you did? Yeah. Delaware, we... I felt like we didn't connect as much from one line to the next where I feel like LaSalle, we did a little bit better job of taking care of the ball when we got into our attacking third and having a few more connections through that midfield range. Do you think having to play teams like Syracuse and Delaware at the beginning of the season help you to be ready for those situations? I mean, you look at Syracuse, they started off number eight, now they're number nine. Uh, So it's a top 10 team that, your team did very well against, um, you know, take away the first five minutes and Towson led on the scoreboard. Um, So that's, I mean, obviously they're a great team. And then Delaware, we can talk ad nauseum about the different accolades they've won over the past five years. And I mean, including the national championship. Uh, So do you think having those difficult teams early on in your schedule sets you up to be able to pull off those set pieces um, and to be able to transition uh, like you did against LaSalle? Yeah, 100%. When EA first came to us and asked if we wanted to play Syracuse, we were all in the mindset of you got to play the best to be the best. And we figured might as well start off strong and get used to the high tempo, high pe- high paced game, especially from not playing for 497 days or whatever the number was. We figured, you know, start off strong and that way we can fix the problems right away and then be ready for when we get to in-conference games. Obviously this season is a little bit different because of COVID. What challenges are you seeing and having to overcome because of the pandemic? Luckily we haven't had to have our whole team shut down. We never had to take a break in the fall or so far yet this spring, knock on wood. And so we've had to really make sure that we follow a strict bubble that we stay within like our field hockey team and it has been a bit of a struggle just with like people our team we haven't really been able to socialize as much but every single person on our team has sacrificed that social need of being able to go hang out with friends from home or you know not necessarily go out to dinner but instead like do a FaceTime and have a virtual dinner we've all made those sacrifices and it has been difficult and sometimes, but Towson Field Hockey as a whole, we've all come together and supporting each other. So it's a little bit easier to make those hard decisions. How difficult do you think it is? Because, I mean, you think about, we always talk about uh, how difficult the schedule is for a student athlete, where you have to manage lifting and practice and classes. And it ends up seeming like you're busy 80, 90 hours a week. And now you take away the ability to, to socialize even outside of practice. I mean, how difficult has that really been? It, 
it has been a struggle and anyone that tells you that it's not is probably lying but I mean our team we are such a strong family and we have found ways that we can still make the best of it I mean we are giving a tremendous opportunity to still be able to play during this time where a lot of people aren't able to and we've kind of just put that into our mindset of we have a tremendous opportunity we don't want to waste it and life as a student athlete it's it's very very busy and for a while when all of a sudden we went from go 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 to go home do nothing for a few months last spring that shift was very hard and I think that shift from constantly going to the nothing was almost harder than what it was coming back now this fall of having like virtual classes and then being able to go to practice. And building off of that for you personally, you're a nursing major. So that's a demanding major and being a student athlete, how are you balancing all this? Um, it's definitely, it's definitely interesting sometimes. Um, luckily there are, there's Melissa, she is um, kinesiology. So we have a lot of classes that we take together still. So luckily we've been really good of like being on each other's backs. Hey, we need to get this done. Let's do it today. And that has helped me tremendously. And then we have our tutoring groups for all of our sciences that definitely has helped me a lot. And overall, just, I, I, I like to do well under pressure. Like I like doing lots of, lots of stuff going on at once. So I'll stress out in the moment, but then when I get it all done, it's that relief afterwards that I really like. And I mean, I have friends that are nursing majors and they are studying from morning to evening. What does a typical day look like for you throwing practice in there and everything else? Yeah, so I wake up really early, have my classes usually at 8 a.m. And then I pretty much do homework up to either COVID testing, rehab, whatever, and then straight to practice. And then after practice, we have lift, and that's at like six ish. We end at six, and then after that, it's just back to lots of homework, lots of studying, and then try to squeeze in showering and eating between all of that. Sounds like a crazy busy schedule with the stress and everything. What do you like to do for fun, just to like relieve all the stress that comes with school and athletics? So I am a little painter. I like to paint a little bit in my free time. Over COVID, I made a lot of paintings and projects. And now my whole room at home is just filled with them. And then I also like to coach at my old club team. So that was like a big stress reliever for me all summer was that I would go back to my old club and I'd help out with coaches, um, clinics and camps. And it's just amazing seeing all these little kids getting into the sport at such a young age going back to the painting what do you like to paint almost anything I I'm not big on painting people or like animals or anything but I have a huge wave mural that's hanging up above my bed at home and then I just like painting little quotes and crafty things oh so like canvas painting yeah awesome I'm sure with being a student athlete and everything we've talked about, there's been challenges. What would you say is one of the biggest challenges you had and how have you overcome it? One of the biggest challenges was probably how much time I actually did have away from home. It got really hard last year when I was a freshman. I mean, dorm life and we were in season. So the only time I really saw my parents was during our game, like at the end of the game, we'd have a little tailgate and then it'd say, be like, Hey, okay, bye. And then I'd have to go back to then doing homework or getting ready for school this week, whatever. And I knew that there would be that adjustment, but I didn't realize how big it would be because I went to school like 30, 45 minutes away from my hometown planning. Oh, I can see my parents and my family and my friends all the time. And then I got here and that wasn't quite how it went but it got a little bit better as time went on and now that I have my car here it can I can see them a lot more just transitioning back to the team so it's a young team who are you guys looking to as the leaders on the team we we look to beta and to jflow a lot they and abby 
they've all been so vocal with us and so warm and welcoming. And all of them are very real type of leaders. They lead in very different ways, but all of them are real with you. So they have no problem being like, hey, can we have a conversation about this? Like, you're doing great. Here's what you can work on. And especially Beta, she's just very real with all of us. And every single person on our team can go and have a conversation with her and ask her for feedback. And she's also welcoming to feedback herself. And she has no sort of ego or anything like that. And she will go and ask someone for feedback and help for a certain skill. And even though we are a young team, the upperclassmen that we do have just lead in such strong ways that it doesn't really feel like it. Have you ever had to step into that type of leadership role? I mean, I know you mentioned Beta and Jenna and Abby, but when you look at next year, when a lot of them won't be with the program anymore after graduating, uh, do you see yourself stepping into that type of role? Possibly. I mean, I, I do see myself as being a leader, but I don't believe that I need a certain title or anything to be able to lead. And it could, it could potentially happen, but I think we do have a lot of really strong juniors that can also lead really well too. You mentioned how close the team is. Can you just like, what's a little more insight on the team dynamic this year? So we have Lena, the transfer student from Belgium. And as soon as she came in and we were allowed to then hang out as a team, it has been all giggles since then. And before our Syracuse game, one of our upperclassmen held like a team pasta party and we were all goofing around, joking. We were sitting outside eating our dinner talking about not just field hockey, but everything else that you could possibly talk about. And it's just the team dynamic. We are all so close with each other and not just because of field hockey. We have so many things to talk about outside of field hockey. Individually, like, are you, are you a superstitious athlete? Do you have? (laughs) Yeah, I am. That's actually, we were joking about that just like a week or two ago. I am very superstitious like last season I had a I had it down to the necklace that I had to wear the hawk socks the spandex the game necklace the earrings like I once I find like a pattern that I'm like okay I feel on today like I I like this little outfit that I got going on like that's what I have to wear for then every single game after that and like whatever my little pre-game warm-up is that's what I have to do pre-game braid Georgia, she always braids my hair. So whichever braid she does, I'm like, that's the one I need for the rest of the season. So what what is this season like? Have you figured it out? I figured out the hair. The hair, I need to go with the little headband braid. But I'm still, I'm still figuring out a, a little bit more of the outfit. Yeah. Um, Gotta go with what you did Sunday, Mel. <laughs> very true. Very true. I could do that. Do you guys like have a hype up playlist? Do you do what kind of music are you listening to before the game? How are you getting yourself just game focused, game ready? A lot of Beyonce for sure. Okay. Lena, she loves Beyonce. She screams it when we're up in our little classroom locker room since we can't go into our real locker room. We've made it work with another classroom. And so we roll in the speaker, we're jamming out to music, braiding our hair and everything. And I, I love our little pregame sessions because we'll turn out the lights and one of the girls brought this, you know, the little skylight things that are in now where it shines like the galaxy on the ceiling. One of the girls brought that. So we had that going, the speaker, and we had the little hype session. And yeah, I, I love to get hyped to music. So that's always just my favorite part of game day is that part. And then listening to our awesome mixtape on the field well what's your go-to song then <sighs> oh my gosh that that's a hard one hmm. gotta ask tough questions you know honestly i don't really have a go-to song but anything by Nicki minaj will more than likely get me hyped up for game day so you mentioned beyonce what is the one beyonce song that you all when it comes on oh shit 
I can't remember the name of it, but it's the one where it's like she counts down from 10, 9, 8, and she like... I think it's... Is that called Countdown? I think it's actually called Countdown. It, it might be, but yeah, that one plays at least like two or three times before we go out. You talked about Georgia doing your hair, and obviously we know that you and Georgia are best friends. Can you talk about what it's like to play in high school with Georgia and then to have both been recruited here and now you are starting together? So me and Georgia actually started playing field hockey together when we were in third grade. And our moms already knew each other because both of our older siblings were actually in the same grade. So we kind of started off the bat as like, we already knew each other. And then we started playing the sport together. And then her mom was coaching us then from third, fourth grade, she started fourth grade up until eighth grade. And then when we got to high school, then we went to the same high school and we were playing on the same club team. So it was just a lot of hockey with each other. So we kind of developed that sixth sense where it's you already know where they're going to be. And for high school, it was kind of like she would send it to a spot and then she would know that I would run there to get it. And then I'd send it to the next spot and I knew that she would go there. We just kind of had that connection with each other. And so then we started looking at colleges sophomore year. We both came to a Towson Prospect Day and both of us really liked the campus. We liked the team. We had so much fun. So then we kept coming back. So we came to the spring one and then the summer clinic and then the fall one and we kept coming back. And then junior year, like when it came time for like people to start committing, both of us were like, hey, I really like Towson would you care if I committed here too? And both of us were like, no, that's awesome. I mean, who really has the opportunity to say that they've played with someone for 14 years? So we both came in, we committed, we came in, and then we had a pact with each other that when we got here, we were just going to ball out and play as best as we could and show that we wanted to be here and that we wanted to play. And so then first game last year, Lehigh, we were starting and then she actually sent me the ball because she knew the space that I was going to. And then I scored off of that ball and it was kind of like, wow, like we've been doing this in third grade. And that moment was kind of like a, all that, that 10 years of hockey together kind of just paid off and showed like we still got it. Spe- you, you brought up kind of the recruitment process a little bit. What was, what was your recruitment? What was that experience like for you? I... I reached out to my club coach and my club coach, she actually helped me a lot with the recruiting process. She is a Towson Field Hockey alum as well. So she loved the fact that I wanted to come to Towson and I definitely reached out to like a bunch of schools. And then I gave my club coach the list of schools and then she would follow up with each one for me. And then when I told her that I was really serious at Towson, she made sure that she kept being like, hey, I have an athlete for you. She's really good. Like, we, she really wants to come here. Let me know. And then, boom, here I am. So what other factors came into that decision to come to TU? There was a lot for me. So first, there were a lot of schools that they said that they wouldn't accept athletes and nursing majors. And Coach Jackson was actually one of the first – coaches to say that she would allow me to do nursing as well as play so that right there was a big deciding factor to put into it and then also the fact that this is only 30 45 minutes away from my home I didn't really want to go so far away that I couldn't see my family and my friends from home and overall just when I came here and I toured the campus met the team I just I basically fell in love instantly with the place and I knew that this is where I wanted to go so coming full circle back to nursing, why, why did you choose that major? My grandma, she's actually a nurse at a pediatrics office. And then my mom, she is a three-time cancer survival. So I've always been around like medical stuff and seeing doctors and stuff like that with her. And I've always just been intrigued with the field. And then this sounds really silly, but... There's this TV show on TLC that's called Untold Stories of the ER. And anytime I was sick growing up, I would watch that. And I just thought it was so cool because it's 
people coming through with like a pole through their head, but they're still talking and giant gashes and cuts, but you know, they're like up moving around and stuff like that. And I just thought, wow, that'd be awesome to see that every single day. So is the, is being an ER nurse your like end goal? Yep. That's awesome. I'm going to try a new thing with the podcast. I'm going to try these rapid fire questions. I'm going to get my phone. We're going to time it. Oh I'm going to see how many other athletes we bring on and who can beat it. One word answers. There, you'll, you'll, you'll see what I mean. Okay. Brandon's got the timer going. Oh, I'm nervous. <laughs> okay. You ready? Okay. <laughs> okay. Favorite sport to watch. Ice hockey. Favorite food. Mac and cheese. Favorite athlete. Alex Ovechkin. Favorite color? Blue. Morning person or a night owl? Night owl. Favorite movie? The Blind Side. Favorite TV show? Grey's Anatomy. Favorite song? Oh! I'm gonna trip you up. Dollars on my head by Gunna. Favorite musical artist? Nicki Minaj. Last question. Left shoe or right shoe goes on first? Left. Okay. Wow, that's pretty good. We'll have to keep that for the record for next time. Mm -hmm. You can get beat. 35 seconds, by the way. Okay. So you did good. I thought, I really thought when I said favorite song, because once I asked you that, it kind of tripped you up. I really thought that was going to get you. Yeah, you almost did for a second. (laughs) So I wanted to bring up uh, last year a little bit, because obviously there was a a big deal last year. uh, First division one field hockey game in the state of Texas. Uh, you got to play Miami, Ohio. And while it didn't go the way you wanted, obviously, what was it like to be a part of that first game? I mean, you had obviously the game itself, but then the, just the theatrics that were around it with the, you know, the students that were able to watch and having that first division one game that far West. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. And I am all for growing the game and getting younger kids started, getting more males to join the sport. Like I am all for it. So being able to say I was a part of that was just unbelievable. And just the trip itself. I mean, that was my first time off the coast and then feeling the energy during the game of these little kids being able to see their first, maybe their first collegiate game. I mean, it was just an unreal experience to have. And you, this is the second time you're mentioning like younger kids and coaching, how did you kind of, you said with your club team, how did you kind of get into that and coaching? I originally started as a way to volunteer, get my volunteer hours for National Honor Society in high school. So I started with the local rec team. And then I also did this travel lacrosse team because I used to play lacrosse too. And then I realized how cool it was to then be engaged with this many younger athletes and then see them grow. And so my senior year of high school, I asked my club coach if I could help out with one of the younger teams as like an assistant coach. And so then I had these little U10s. So they're like seven, eight, nine year old little nuggets running around. I mean, some of them barely even could hold the stick right, but then other ones are already insanely good. It's crazy. And just seeing these little kids be so excited to play the sport. I mean, they showed to practice with the biggest smiles. It was just amazing. Like, I don't know how to explain it in other words, but it was just amazing to see, amazing to feel. And then watching them progress and grow throughout just a short few months of their season. I mean, I just, I knew that I wanted to then keep doing that. So what would you say is one of your most memorable moments coaching? Mm, Probably when I did have these U10s my senior year because they wiped everyone. I mean, it was, it was crazy. They, they were talking to each other, like communicating, like you want to believe it. They looked like they'd been there before. Like they knew what they were doing. They were seniors in high school already. It was just insane. And we played at this tournament, WC Eagles, which is like a big powerhouse club team in field hockey. And they won every game, wiped the floor. It was beautiful hockey. I mean, like for U10, beautiful hockey. 
and just their excitement when they got the medals at the end. It was just, it was really cool. Transitioning back to Towson, what is one of your most memorable moments thus far as a TU athlete? Definitely the basketball games. We, a group of us, that's, we would go to almost every single basketball game, like women's or men's. And our goal was to make sure that we were on like the big screen thing in the center for when they would do like the Simba or like the dancing ones. And there's actually one where it was the Simba one and we lifted Megan McLaughlin like up in the air, all of us trying to like get her on. And it was just a hot mess, but it was so funny. Okay. So are you back? So you're a basketball fan. Yeah. Okay. March Madness is going on. Have you been keeping up with that? Or are you a little bit no. getting in your busy schedule? Yeah, I've been very stressed. So I did miss out on March Madness this year, but next year I'm definitely going to make sure I pay more attention to it. I mean, this year, I think, I think Brent and I were talking about this the other day in the office, Oral Roberts came out of nowhere and destroyed my bracket. So I don't think you're really like missing much. I think everyone's brackets kind of done at this point. Yeah, I yeah, I definitely would never have guessed that. So going back to the the coaching that you've been doing, it kind of comes full circle because you've been trying to instill a love of field hockey into these younger, you know, up and coming athletes. Uh, what originally drew you to the sport of hockey? So second grade, started playing soccer, did travel soccer and everything, and I just absolutely hated it. It was awful. I uh, offsides, no sense no sense at all. And so my mom, she was just kind of like, Hey, you're still going to play a sport. So do you want to try field hockey? And at that point I was playing everything. I mean, I did basketball, dance, lacrosse, golf. I was like, sure. I don't know what that is, but I I'll play. And then I started playing and I loved it. So then my mom got me started at age 12, my club team in fifth grade. And that just made me love the sport even more. Which came first, field hockey or ice hockey? Field hockey. I wasn't allowed to play ice hockey. My parents. Well, no, I, I more meant like, did you start loving ice hockey before you played field hockey, or did you play field hockey after you had started watching ice hockey? I started watching ice hockey after I started playing field hockey. But I wanted to play ice hockey. My parents said that they paid too much for my teeth and all, and they didn't want me to mess them up. Yeah, I, I 10 out of 10 don't recommend ice hockey. Everyone at TSN has heard this story. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it for this week's episode, of Tiger fans. Thank you, Brandon Sachs and Sam Eldritch, for joining me. You can catch Sam at Attack with Towson Field Hockey this season. For the Towson Sports Network, I'm Laura Leidig, and as always, go Tigers.